Welcome to the Way of the Dad podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness. If you like what you are hearing, please share the podcast and give it a review on the platform where you listen. Thank you. Episode 2 Praise, but no pom poms. The value of praise, the ease of criticism, and the importance of maintaining the balance between the two. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's good to have you here. And, uh, well, today I've got a, got another episode. This one has been maybe a foundational lesson that I picked up over the years. um, Specifically for my stepdad. My stepdad was a... uh, (laughs) It's kind of funny. He's uh, he's from the baby boomer generation. He's uh, a child of World War II. Whereas my mom was definitely more from the uh, peace, love, and rock and roll generation. <laughs> um, so there was a, a definite different flavor of parenting introduced in the mix when I was around 10 years old when my mom met my stepdad. Um, he has uh, since passed on, but he taught me a lot of things over the years. I can't say that he taught me everything intentionally, Uh, There's definitely some things he taught me that I don't think was on purpose, and this was one of those. I'm going to try to stay kind of directly on this topic, because this one was really, really important to me, and it really clicked for me sometime probably within the first year and a half or so after my son was born. And what it relates to is praise and criticism. So, for a little backstory, uh, my stepfather uh, was a very good man. Not always easy to live with, but a, but a good man at his at his core. Very good man. But he wasn't the best communicator. Uh, I remember many times. There would be projects going on around the house or some kind of a home improvement or or something. And uh, (laughs) he would uh, tell me he needs uh, a tool. I remember there was one specific time, and of course this was definitely not the first time. He told me he needed a rivet gun. I am probably 15 at the time. And my knowledge of tools roughly encapsulated drills, sawzalls, circular saws, screwdrivers, ratchets, and that that might be that might be just about it. And the farther you get outside of that uh, that sandbox, uh, the less I know. So when I heard the word rivet gun, um, I'm pretty sure at that time my stomach sank just a little bit because I knew that I had absolutely no clue what that tool was. But as was common, my first question back was, okay, where's it at? And he would tell me, and I'm being a little facetious, but it was basically his description of where things were was it's on the thing near the thing by the thing. So, not exactly a pirate map with X marks the spot. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, and and I learned if I asked again or asked for more clarification, there would be a, a, a sharp rebuke coming. And uh, it was just his nature, especially when he was in the middle of a project, he was already frustrated. 
and uh, <laughs> he wasn't really into drawing me out a detailed map of things. And um, I would go out there and stare at this gigantic wall of tools. We had a, a workbench, probably 25 feet long, a little overkill, but hey, I can't, I can't fault it now, now that I'm of the age uh, where I can appreciate a 25-foot-long workbench. <laughs> but uh, there was just, of course, a, a peg wall that went the entire span of that that workbench. And then there are shelves underneath the workbench. And there's nothing but tools. Tools everywhere. And the only thing I can think is, well, he asked for a rivet gun, so I'm looking for something that kind of looks like a gun. Has a handle, maybe a trigger, something like that. Of course, found out later. I was totally off the mark. Um, I do today now know what a rivet gun is. Um, but I take this slight aside to point out and highlight you know, my stepfather was, again, a good man, but not a great communicator. One of the things he really struggled with, and of course I wasn't aware of this then as much as I became aware of it, uh, especially after I had a, a child who was already starting to need um, correction and and active parenting, you know, do this, don't do that, you know. So my stepfather was not very good with praise. In fact, if I'm being honest, he was uh, pretty bad at it. it. It was something you didn't hear very often. Um, now, I'll tell you what, if you did something wrong, or you uh, forgot to do something, or a chore, you know, one of the chores that I had was taking out the trash. And, you know, trash comes on the same day each week, as we all know. And uh, I could take out the trash six months in a row without fail. But if I forgot that trash that next time, it's, oh boy, it's like I never, I've never done it right. And so, per, so criticism, I should say, was extremely easy to come by. And as a teenager, of course, <laughs> you know everything. I mean, 15 years old, what's left to find out, right? <laughs> you know? Um, so you're, you're, you're feeling yourself pretty good as a teenager. Your brain is expanding. Your worldview is expanding. Your, the way you start thinking about life and deep thoughts and things like that is, is just, is just going at an exponential rate compared to what it was, say, two, three, even four years ago. And... Of course, I started getting the impression that, well, I never do anything right around here, apparently, because all I heard was criticism. Now, I'm going to be very fair. My stepdad did give me praise. Um, it was not nearly as consistent as the criticism. I would say... Uh, 10 to 1 ratio criticism to praise is probably in the ballpark of correct. Maybe not that good, but I'll, I'll give that. My stepdad was really good at, um, when he had a few beers, it, it's almost like it allowed him to relax and, and let his guard down a little bit. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he was worried that if he gave me praise, that it would, I, I don't know, um, that it would uh, 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 soften me up or something. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't quite understand the psychology, other than I know that he probably was not praised very often himself. I think that's pretty easy to come by, uh, that thought process there. Um, feeling that, you know, based on what I knew about his parents, um, his upbringing, which was extraordinarily tough to say the least, uh, they did not grow up rich. Of course, I didn't grow up rich, uh, but they grew up 
very poor, uh, even even for the even for the time. So there's not a lot of time to worry about whether you're praising or critiquing enough. It's just getting through today, getting through this week, getting through this month. But when Bob did have a few beers, he would relax enough to say something good. and You know I love you, right? You know I think you're doing a great job, right? It was almost like he was like reaching out a little bit, vulner- a little more vulnerable and reaching out. Almost like he didn't want to lose me. And I don't mean lose me as in, you know, lose my life or I was going to run away, but lose the rapport, lose the relationship of father figure to young man or young child in general. So this really hit me when I, like I said, my son was probably about one and a half, two, definitely uh, (laughs) uh, discovered walking and wow. Uh, Turn your head and turn it back, and it's amazing how fast they can go at that age. You're just stunned by it. And, of course, that means they're getting into everything, everything, constantly, totally. And there was one day where I, I can't remember what it was, but I praised something that my son did. My son went towards this thing instead of this other thing. The other thing I've been saying, no, 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 no. Get out of there, get out of there, get out of there, don't go in there, bad, whatever trying to dissuade my son from doing this thing. I can't remember what it was. I think it was the uh, home entertainment center, you know, and had electronics in it. And, you know, you start pressing some buttons on a on an, uh, uh, a home theater receiver or a DVD player or whatever, and, and good luck getting it all back sorted out. And it hit me when I praised him, and he wanted to go right back and do that thing again. Now, this should be obvious. But when you're parenting, it a lot of things aren't obvious. Because sometimes as a new parent, you might feel like you're literally just... It's like riding a bull. Just hang on. Just hang on. <laughs> and then some, some days it's very much like that. And... So it really hit me, and I'm like, whoa, well, that worked. And, of course, this caused me to do some thinking, and, of course, it caused me to remember my stepdad and how he didn't praise very much or very often. But when I did get those glimmers of praise, those little nuggets that once in a blue moon they came around, I did like it. I liked it a lot. And it wasn't even much, but it was something, and it was very different from criticism. So, over the years, of course my son is now 13, I have refined my position and and my thought processes about criticism and praise. And... Here's something that I have discovered. Again, something that seems obvious, but when you're in the forest, or when you're, what is it saying? You can't see the forest through the trees or for the trees. I'm probably butchering that, but you understand what I mean. When you're in the forest, you can't see the forest. And parenting can be a lot like that. You're just focused on exactly what's in front of you. You can't see always the whole big picture. But I have found a few things. First thing, it's really, really, really hard to remember to give praise. It seems so easy. It's so easy to say it, right? Obvious. Well, of course you have to praise your child when they do things right. (laughs) You're an idiot if you don't. But... Doing it, not so easy. Not so easy to remember. And my stepdad would say sometimes, because I I remember there was one time, 
probably more than once, but there's one that sticks out. I asked him, I said, do you think it would be possible to tell me something I'm doing right? And that, that's not a, that's not a direct quote. I'm pretty sure I, I'm paraphrasing for sure, but that was the gist. I wanted him to tell me something I was doing right, because even then I kind of subconsciously realized all I ever hear is negative. Now, was it all I ever heard? No. It was the extreme majority. And he told me it, it, the, the, basic, the basic response was, well, why would I praise you for doing something you're supposed to do? Yeah. Something I'm supposed to do. Well, that was a, a little window into his mindset. Again, not heavy on praise. Probably not praised much himself. But what I found between that conversation, and I remembered that conversation, and what I've learned over the time is, when you praise, when you remember to, when you make the effort to, and you, boy, believe me, you do have to make the effort. It is extremely easy to get into serious amounts of critique and to get into very sparse amounts of praise. But when you do praise, and you do it often enough, it, it earns. You earn the right to criticize. And this was something that kind of I don't want to say it blew me away. There was no one moment that was like, aha, light bulb moment. But I learned over time, when you give praise and you give criticism, you're giving two kinds of attention, and all kids want attention. They want your attention. Sometimes they do things <laughs> specifically to get your attention. Wish all those things were good, but we all know that's not the case. But what you're doing is you're showing there's two kinds of attention instead of just one, negative. And if all you ever give is negative attention, believe me, your kids will go out of their way to find a way to get that attention. Negative or not, attention, some attention is better than no attention. But when you show them that they're two flavors of attention. You know, one is sour, bitter, angry, frustrated, irritated, exhausted. And the other flavor is warm, loving, bright, happy. I don't know about you, but I know which kind of attention I prefer. It also, I have found, adds weight. When your kids know that you praise them for things they do correctly, it gives more gravity to when you are unhappy or displeased with something, and they care more. Because one of the problems was, when all I heard was criticism with my stepdad, it got a lot easier to dismiss what he would say. Because, oh, gee, yet another... Um, Yet another verbal tirade, or maybe that's not the good word. Yet another verbal dress down from the guy who always gives me a verbal dress down. And I know that's a bit of an old-fashioned term. I'm literally struggling with coming up with a better one. 
But when you praise and you like getting that praise, when you get something other than that praise, it makes you, it makes a kid, makes your child um, want to not get that again. <laughs> you know, uh, you're usually getting served uh, hot, fresh pizza and you get served, uh, I don't know, liver and onions. And you're like, yeah, I, I don't want that ever again. I don't like it when I get served that. I, I want to go back to the pizza. So, of course this is obvious. To say. But it is not easy to do. And the balance is important here. You can't be all praise, obviously, as with anything. Everything is good in moderation, in its proper moderation, I should say. That doesn't mean 50-50 for everything. But when you, when you think about your kids and their personality and what they like, what they don't like, what they respond well to, what they don't respond well to, you want to find that balance. You want to praise for the things they do right. Because here's... I might do a bigger episode on this little thought process, so I definitely don't want to get off on a, you know, another tangent with this. But the thing that my, father, my stepfather said to me was, well, why would I... Why would I whip out... I think he did mention pom-poms, and that's probably where the pom-poms comes in the... Uh, intro line here. What do you want me to do? Wave pom-poms for things you're supposed to do? I'm not gonna shower you with praise because that's what you're supposed to do. But here's the kicker. And of course I realized this much later as well. I was 15. I was 13. I was 10. I was 8. I was six. I was two. Just like my kids are now up to 13 and 12. But at that time I was 15. How the hell do I know what to do? And whose job is it to teach me and show me what to do? How to do it? And the most important thing why it's good or bad. Let that really sink in. And boy, that line I'm, these days, I'm not really a big fan of that line anymore because everybody says, let that sink in when they think they said something very, you know, in some meme that they share on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And they think that they've just said something so profound and you read it and you're like, that's not even accurate, or, yeah, and in other news, water's wet. And maybe that was profound to them. I find a lot of people asking you to let that sink in, and it's either not profound at all, or it's hilariously ignorant. But I am going to ask you to let that sink in for a second. How the hell... Am I, at 15 years old, really and truly supposed to know what to do? Why to do it? How to do it? At 15 years old, I was the only person that knew me that thought I already knew everything. Every other person around me should know better including and especially my parents. So when you think that through, you do have to praise when your child, your kid, your teenager, your, even your young adult. Just because I turned 18, I didn't magically know how to do everything and I wasn't magically perfect. Still not now, but trying to get better every day, I guess. 
when you praise, you're letting them know, hey, you're walking the right path there. You're going in the right direction. Good job. Now, I don't need, you know, a professional cheerleading outfit to come out and, you know, do a whole song and dance number for me. But it's reassuring to get that little pat on the back, that little, hey, good job. I'm proud of you. You don't need pomp and circumstance with it. You don't need a celebration. Now, of course, big good jobs should get a bigger quote-unquote good job. You know, add a boy statement, whatever, add a girl, add a whatever, they, them, you know. But that's how you teach your kids. This is how kids learn. So you want to maintain that balance. You want to have a balance of praise and critique. And I'll get into this in another time, but if you just tell them they did wrong, but you don't follow that up or attach that with Here's how to do it right. You're also missing a big, big, big portion of, quite frankly, your job as a parent. And it's easy to forget, by the way. But that's a time, that's a subject for another podcast episode. So. Let's kind of wrap this up. Even small things deserve a little attaboy. I don't care if you have a toddler, a young child, a preteen, a teen, a young adult, or maybe you know, well, maybe you have a young adult who's just getting out there, getting started in the world. And I'll tell you what, when you leave the nest, it's scary as hell. You don't even know what you're doing. How are you? What's renter's insurance? I don't know. What? The, how do I get that? Who has that? Do I need that? How do I? How do I get water at my apartment or my house? Um, I guess the water company. And of course, admittedly, when I moved out, you know, in the early, uh, I guess it was around two thousand. Didn't have uh, Google. Couldn't just Google everything. You actually had to look things up in the white pages or the yellow pages. And boy, let me tell you, that was a skill. There was a learned skill in there, figuring out how to navigate properly a set of yellow pages and white pages. White pages were pretty easy. It was people, people listings and directory. Uh, Yellow pages was business. For all of you out there who are too young to remember that, but we didn't always have Google, whatever. But it can still be pretty daunting when you think about it. Like, how, how do I get this? And so when you give your children praise, you're showing them that, or you're telling them or, or encouraging them, hey, this is the right path. You're doing good. You're going in the right direction. You're doing it right. Even if they logically know that, you're their parent. You're their father figure, their mother figure. You're their guide. You're their grandpa, their grandma, maybe a really awesome aunt or uncle. Or maybe you're even a mom or a dad that's actually a big brother or a big sister because there's a significant age difference and maybe you ended up having to raise everybody because mom and dad's no longer here or something. You don't actually have to be a father or a mother to be a parent figure. But when you give them praise, it feels good. It's, it, it's reassuring. And it's very important. It's really easy to critique. It is super easy. 
gosh, have you, have your kids ever done anything wrong and you get mad about it? Oh, let the critique flow freely. Because it will. So you want to praise. You don't want to overpraise. You want to critique. Because you need to correct bad, negative actions, whatever, undesirable actions. But you don't want to overdo either. And you want to maintain a balance. And unfortunately, as a parent... Your kid is not the same one year to the next, one month to the next. As they grow, they learn. They get more complex thoughts. They start to see things in more complex ways. And unfortunately, that means the problems they present to you are more complex and different. And so your balance of critique and praise, praise and critique, needs to adjust with that. But never let the praise go. Never give in to the critique. And Sure, anybody of age, we can all use a Star Wars analogy here, you know. The dark side is not stronger, but it is faster and more seductive and easier. Praise is harder. A lot harder. But you got to maintain the balance. So I hope that was helpful. I've already gotten a couple ideas here for other episodes. And I hope this helped. So that's probably going to be about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And uh, I'm going to be working on some things here in the future. uh, Trying to expand uh, the podcast. And I hope you... uh, I hope you enjoy some of the things I'm trying to work up. So until next time, take care of yourselves and have a great day. Thanks for listening. The Way of the Dad podcast is produced and recorded by, well, me, a stunningly average husband and father, who appreciates all of the likes, shares, reviews, and support you give. If you would like to reach out, you can find the podcast on its Facebook page, and of course you can email me at wayofthedadpodcast at gmail.com. Come back next time as we continue to fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness.